Hey guys, it's Fayon here, and today I'm going through the lizard crawl. The lizard crawl is a really cool way to traverse the ground as low as possible. It is really demanding and challenging in a coordination, strength, and mobility perspective. Today I'm going to go through some progressions and ideas on how to start incorporating this into your practice. Think of these progressions like layers. You will start at one layer, you will add another layer, and at times you will get stuck at this new layer. Keep at it, keep patient. Use that layer to identify what you're lacking in. Is it strength? Is it mobility? Is it the coordination? You can then work on that, focus on it, and then from there, you'll be able to identify what is keeping you back from progressing to the next layer. So I'm really excited to share this with you guys. Let's get started. The first step to the lizard crawl is understanding how to coordinate the hands and the feet together. This coordination is called a contralateral pattern. This means opposite hand to opposite foot. If you ever watch animals closely, this is actually how a lot of them move because it is a very efficient walking pattern. Here you can see me traveling with my hips up high and this makes it easier because it takes some load off and then I reach forward with my left hand, then my right foot. Reach forward with my right hand and then my left foot. So it's always this opposite to opposite walking pattern that you need to remember. Even though this first movement may look simple, it holds two key learnings. Number one, when you move, don't reach with the same hand and then move with the same side foot like I'm doing here. This is a different type of crawl. Even though you can do it here at this stage, when building up to the lizard crawl, you'll get stuck. So you need to learn how to move by reaching with one side of the hand and then moving the opposite foot. Number two, how to use your hands properly. This is called soft bear for a reason. You want to place and roll your hand onto the ground. None of this slapping motion, this will hurt over time. You really want to place your hand and roll your hand softly onto the ground. When you place your hand down, you want to use the pisiform part of the hand, which is that fat part at the bottom of your wrist. The next step is simple. The extra layer is then moving your knee further up so that it touches your elbow. Everything else stays the same. So as you reach forward with the hand, then you take a bigger step so that the knee touches the elbow. And then you can see as you travel along, it starts looking like a high lizard crawl. With this variation, I also start bringing my hips down a little lower. And this really starts giving you the sense of the lizard crawl. As you reach with the knee, you'll also find that you'll have to twist a little bit to open up the hips. The next progression is a little bit more demanding in both a strength and balance perspective. Before we were reaching with the hand and then placing it down before moving with the foot. Here we're going to lift the hand and then lift the foot as well so that we only have remaining two supports on the ground. So the only difference is before we were practicing always having three points of support on the ground. Here we are going to emphasize and practice having only two points of support on the ground. Remember this progression, as we get lower to the ground, as we are going to practice shortly, it will get harder and harder. So we can first start off by practicing three points of support and then two points of support. In these high lizard progressions, we are also keeping our elbows locked out to build up a little bit of straight arm strength. After the high lizard, we're going to focus on a movement called the twist and reach. This is really important to start understanding how to rotate the hips in the lizard crawl. This tool is also very effective in teaching the concept of weight shifting. As you reach forward, you'll actually feel like your back leg is getting light and this will make it easier to move forward. You can set up for the twist and reach from the squat position by placing one foot down, twisting to the side so that your hips are facing all the way to the left or to the right. This is really key. We want to overemphasize facing our hips all the way to the left or all the way to the right. And then as we reach over, we step forward and then twist to the other side. As you get stronger, you can perform the twist and reach with more of your leg off the ground. So when you start, you can have the whole of your leg resting on the ground. And then as you get stronger, you can push so that there is a gap that forms. As you reach forward with the hand, you'll have to pivot on the back foot and then you'll end up in a two point support position before placing that foot down, twisting your hips and then facing the other side. Two things we're practicing here is the hip rotation in the crawl and then how to pivot on that back foot so that you can enable the rotation. Okay, now we're getting really close to understanding how to transform into the low lizard. So with this movement, which is the twist and reach with a push up, is simply performing the same movement as before. And then as you reach over, you stop, place both hands on the ground, perform a push up and then move on. 
You can see as I move along, I reach and then place the hand on the ground. I then replace the other hand into a better position to make it a little bit easier to perform the push-up. You can see now at the bottom of the push-up that is now looking like a low lizard. This is the point as well where you might start getting stuck with your strength development. You can approach this in two ways where you perform more reps for volume. So here I'm doing two push-ups instead of one or instead of volume, you can increase the intensity. So the way to do that is you can start off with both hands supported, then you can take away the palm of your hand so that you only use your fingers, your five fingers, then four fingers, then three fingers, like shown here, then two fingers, and then one finger. You can build up to all the way to a one-handed push-up in this method and you can just find your own level by using the amount of support that you need. Remember, as you get stronger, bring it back to the twist and reach with the push-up. So here you can see me perform the twist and reach in the one-handed push-up variation. Now you can start bringing all those elements into the low crawling lizard. Here I'm performing it with three points of support. So basically from the bottom position of the twist and reach, when you go down into the push-up, then you just reach forward with one hand, place it down and then twist and pivot, just like the twist and reach to move forward. Don't forget everything that we learned from before. So when you reach with the hand, you move with the opposite foot and then we rotate with the hips to face from left to right. Now here is another tool which can help you at this stage. These typewriter push-ups may help build the strength to stay low to the ground, but more importantly, help you understand how to pivot on the pisiform on your hands so that you can travel and crawl smoothly across the ground. From here, you can also start working on some flair. So in the low lizard, you can add an arm sweep by sweeping the reaching hand along low across the ground, and this starts making it look even nicer. Just like the high lizard, we can progress the low lizard by moving to two points of support. Now we're going to reach with the hand and then at the same time we're going to lift the foot so that there are only two points of support on the floor and then place the hand down before moving forward again. As you lift the foot, you can bend the knee and then internally rotate the hip and this will help keep your hips even lower to the ground as you travel forward. You can work on your hip mobility with these simple squat internal rotations where from the squat position you internally rotate the hip by trying to place the knee onto the ground in front of you. As I was learning the lizard crawl I got stuck at some stages because I just wasn't strong enough and it was too hard for me to perform the crawl progression. This tool which is the lean forward planche push up really helped me build the strength so that when I returned to the lizard crawl it was a lot easier. Key lesson here is to work on the strength separately. And that's it, that's all the stages for today. As you work on the details, you'll get better and better, you'll get more and more efficient, and they will become less and less tiring. And then the final product is this sexy looking lizard crawl. That's it guys, that's the lizard crawl. I hope you guys enjoyed. As you can see, there are a lot of layers, a lot of stages to get to the final product, which makes it a very interesting and worthwhile movement to study for a period. If you enjoyed this video or have any questions, remember you can comment in the section below. Otherwise, jump on the PassiveHang.com where there is an online space, the Active Hang, the forum, where you can ask a question and I'll get back to you. I hope to see you next time and I'll catch you in the next video.